Today is the 21st of November 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship. If you're joining us for the first time today, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer and scripture and music. It's dead simple. It's dead easy. You'll pick it up as we go along. So having explained how it works, let's start today's leg of walking the way with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? Light of Christ, awaken us to the glory of your presence in our midst. Shine among us in such a way that the darkness without and within may be pushed back, such that we may truly see what is really real. Father, help us to recognize our sin for what it is. Enable us to see the world as you created it to be, as you created us to be. Lord, empower us to move from darkness to light, from sin to new life. May your light within us shine through into this day as all days. This we pray in the name of the Word made flesh, the light which is the light of all people, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings from t- for today. And in today's Bible readings, we continue with the book of Ezekiel. But we'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds this morning to the words that we hear. We ask that you change our hearts 
You change our attitude. You change our lives in response. Speak to us this morning, Lord. Make your voice loud and clear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. We're beginning with Ezekiel 21. The word of the Lord came to me again. Son of man, turn your face towards Jerusalem and preach against the sanctuaries. Prophesy against the land of Israel and say to it, This is what the Lord says. I am against you. I will draw my sword from its sheath and cut off both the righteous and the wicked from you. Since I will cut off both the righteous and the wicked, my sword will therefore come out of its sheath against everyone from the south to the north. So all the people will know that I, Yahweh, have taken my sword from its sheath. It will not be sheathed again. But you, son of man, groan. Groan bitterly with a broken heart right before their eyes. And when they ask you, why are you groaning, then say, because of the news that is coming. Every heart will melt and every hand will become weak. Every spirit will be discouraged and every knee will turn to water. Yes, it is coming and it will happen. This is the declaration of the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy. This is what the Lord says. You are to proclaim. A sword. A sword is sharpened and polished. It is sharpened for slaughter, polished to flash like lightning. Shall we rejoice? the scepter of my son. The sword despises every tree. The sword is given to be polished, to be grasped in the hand. It is sharpened and it is polished to be put in the hand of the slayer. Cry out and wail, son of man, for it is against my people. It is against all the princes of Israel. They are given over to the swords of my people. Therefore strike your thigh in grief. Surely it will be a trial. And what if the sword despises even the scepter? The scepter will not continue. This is a declaration of the Lord. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and clap your hands together. Let the sword strike two times, even three. It is a sword for massacre, a sword for great massacre. It surrounds them. I have appointed a sword for slaughter at all their gates, so that their hearts may melt and many may stumble. Yes, it is ready to flash like lightning. It is drawn for slaughter. Slash to the right, turn to the left, wherever your blade is directed. I will also clap my hands together and I will satisfy my wrath. I, Yahweh, have spoken. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Now you, son of man, mark out two roads that the sword of Babylon's king may take. Both of them should originate from the same land and make a signpost at the fork in each road to each city. Mark out a road that the sword can take to Rabbah of the Ammonites, and to Judah into fortified Jerusalem. For the king of Babylon stands at the split in the road. At the fork of the two roads, to practice divination, he shakes the arrows, consults the idols, and observes the liver. The answer marked Jerusalem appears in his right hand, indicating that he should set up battering rams, give the order to slaughter, Raise a battle cry, set battering rams against the gates, build a ramp and construct a siege wall. It will seem like false divination in the eyes of those who have sworn an oath to the Babylonians, but it will draw attention to their guilt so that they will be captured. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says, because you have drawn attention to guilt exposing your transgressions, so that your sins are revealed in all your actions. Since you have done this, you will be captured by them. And you, profane and wicked prince of Israel, the day has come for your punishment. This is what the Lord God says. Remove the turban and take off the crown, things that will not remain as they are. Exalt the lowly and bring down the exalted. A ruin, a ruin, I will make it a ruin. Yet this will not happen until he comes. I have given the judgment to him. Now prophesy, son of man, and say, This is what the Lord God says concerning the Ammonites and their contempt. You are to proclaim a sword. A sword is drawn for slaughter, polished to consume to flash like lightning. While they offer false visions and lying divinations about you, the time has come to put you to the necks of the profaned wicked ones. The day has come for your punishment. 
return it to its sheath. I will judge you in the place where you were created, in the land of your origin. I will pour out my indignation on you. I will blow the fire of my fury on you. I will hand you over to brutal men, skilled at destruction. You will be fuel for the fire. Your blood will be spilt in the land. You will not be remembered, for I, Yahweh, have spoken. The word of the Lord came to me. As for you, son of man, will you pass judgment? Will you pass judgments against the city of blood? Then explain all her detestable practices to her. You are to say, this is what the Lord God says, a city that sheds blood within her walls, so that her time of judgment has come, and who makes idols for herself, so that she is defiled. You are guilty of the blood that you have shed, and you are defiled from the idols that you have made. You have brought your judgment days near, and have come to your years of punishment. Therefore, I have made you a disgrace to the nations, and a mockery to all the lands. Those who are near, and those far away from you will mock you, you infamous one, full of turmoil. Look, every prince of Israel within you has used his strength to shed blood. Father and mother are treated with contempt, and the foreign resident is exploited within you. The fatherless and widow are oppressed in you. You despise my holy things and profane my Sabbaths. There are men within you who slaughter in order to shed blood. People who live in you eat at the mountain shrines. They commit immoral acts within you. Men within you have sexual intercourse with their father's wife and violate women during their menstrual impurity. One man within you commits a detestable act with his neighbor's wife. Another wickedly defiles his sister-in-law and yet another violates his sister, his father's daughter. People who live in you accept bribes in order to shed blood. You take interest and you profit on a loan and brutally extort your neighbors. You have forgotten me. This is a declaration of the Lord God. Now look, I clap my hands together against the dishonest profit you have made and against the bloodshed among you. Will your courage endure, or your hands be strong in the days when I deal with you? I, Yahweh, have spoken, and I will act. I will disperse you among the nations and scatter you among the countries. I will purge your uncleanness. You will be profaned in the sight of the nations, then you will know that I am Yahweh. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are copper, tin, iron, and lead inside the furnace. They are the dross of silver. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says, because all of you have become dross, I am about to gather you into Jerusalem. Just as one gathers silver, copper, iron, lead, and tin into the furnace, to blow fire on them and melt them. So I will gather you in my anger and wrath, put you inside and melt you. Yes, I will gather you together and blow on you with the fire of my fury, and you will be melted within the city. As silver is melted inside a furnace, you will be melted inside the city. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, have poured out my wrath on you. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to her, you are a land that has not been cleansed, that has not received rain in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets within her is like a roaring lion tearing its prey. They devour people, seize wealth and valuables, and multiply the widows within her. Her priests do violence to my instructions and profane my holy things. They make no distinction between the holy and the common, and they do not explain the difference between the clean and the unclean. They disregard my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her officials within her are like wolves tearing their prey, shedding blood and destroying lives in order to make profit dishonestly. Her prophets plaster with whitewash for them by seeing false visions and lying divinations. And they say this is what the Lord God says, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced extortion and committed robbery. They have oppressed the poor and needy and unlawfully exploited the foreign resident. I searched for a man among them that would repair the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land so that I might not destroy it, but I found none. So I have poured up my indignation on them and consumed them with the fire of my fury. 
I have brought their actions down on their own heads. This is the declaration of the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me again, Son of man, there were two women, daughters of the same mother, who acted like prostitutes in Egypt, behaving promiscuously with their youth. Their breasts were fondled there, and their virgin nipples caressed. The older one was named Ohala, and her sister was Ohaliba. They became mine and gave birth to sons and daughters. As for their names, Ohala represents Samaria, and Ohaliba represents Jerusalem. Ohala acted like a prostitute, even though she was mine. She lusted after her lovers, the Assyrians, warriors dressed in blue, governors and prefects, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on steeds. She offered her sexual favors to them. All of them were the elite of Assyria. She defiled herself with all those she lusted after and with all their idols. She didn't give up her prom promiscuity that began in Egypt, when men slept with her in her youth caressed her virgin nipples, and poured out their lust on her. Therefore I handed her over to her lovers, the Assyrians she lusted after. They exposed her nakedness, seized her sons and daughters, and killed her with the sword. Since they executed judgment against her, she became notorious among women. Now her sister, Ohaliba, saw this, and she was even more depraved than her lust in Olaha. She made her promiscuous acts worse than those of her sister. She lusted after the Assyrians, governors and prefects, warriors splendidly dressed, horsemen riding on steeds, all of them desirable young men. And I saw that she had defiled herself. Both of them had taken the same path. But she increased her promiscuity when she saw male figures carved on the walls, images of the Chaldeans engraved in vermilion wearing belts on their waists and flowing turbans on their heads. All of them looked like officers, a depiction of the Babylonians in Chaldea, the land of their birth. At the sight of them she lusted after them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. Then the Babylonians came to her, to the bed of love, and defiled her with their lust. But after she was defiled by them she turned away from them in disgust. When she flaunted her promiscuity and exposed her nakedness, I turned away from her in disgust, just as I turned away from her sister. Yet she multiplied her acts of promiscuity, remembering the days of her youth when she acted like a prostitute in the land of Egypt, and lusted after their lovers, whose sexual members were like those of donkeys, and whose omissions were like that of stallions. So you revisited the indecency of your youth, when the Egyptians caressed your nipples to enjoy your youthful breasts. Therefore, Aholabai, this is what I, the Lord God, says. I am going to incite your lovers against you, those you turned away from in disgust. I will bring them against you from every side, the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, Pekod, Shoah, and Koah, and all the Assyrians with them, desirable young men, all of them governors and prefects, officers and administrators, all of them riding on horses. They will come against you with an alliance of nations and with weapons, chariots, and wagons. They will set themselves against you on every side with shields, bucklers, and helmets. I will delegate judgment to them, and they will judge you by their own standards. When I vent my jealous anger on you, they will deal with you in wrath. They will cut off your nose and ears, and your descendants will fall by the sword. They will seize your sons and daughters, and your descendants will be consumed by fire. They will strip you of your clothes and take away your precious jewelry. So I will put an end to your indecency and sexual immorality which began in the land of Egypt. And you will not look longingly at them or remember Egypt any more. For this is what the Lord God says, I am going to hand you over to those you hate, to those you have turned away from in disgust. They will treat you with hatred. Take away all you have worked for and leave you stark naked so that the shame of your debauchery will be exposed, both your indecency and promiscuity. These things will be done to you because you acted like a prostitute with the nations, defiling yourself with their idols. You have followed the path of your sister, so I will put her cup in your hand. This is what the Lord God says. You will drink your sister's cup which is deep and wide. You will be an object of ridicule and scorn, for it holds so much. 
you will be filled with drunkenness and grief, with the cup of devastation and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria. You will drink it and drain it. Then you will gnaw its broken pieces and tear your breasts. For I have spoken. This is the declaration of the Lord God. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says, Because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, you must bear the consequences of your indecency and promiscuity. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, will you pass judgment against Ohala and Oholiba? Then declare their detestable practices to them, for they have committed adultery and blood is on their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols. They have even made the children they bore to me pass through the fire as food for the idols. They also did this to me. They defiled my sanctuary on that same day and profaned my Sabbath. On the same day they slaughtered their children for their idols. They entered my sanctuary to profane it. Yes, that is what they did inside my house. In addition, they sent for men who came from far away when a messenger was dispatched to them. And look how they came. You bathed painted your eyes, and adorned yourself with jewellery for them. You sat on a luxurious couch with a table spread before it, on which you had sent my incense and oil. The sound of a carefree crowd was there. Drunkards from the desert were brought in among with common men. They put bracelets on the woman's hands and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said concerning this woman worn out by adultery, Will they now have illicit sex with her, even her? yet they had sex with her, as one does with a prostitute. This is how they had sex with Ohala and Ohaliba, the, those obscene women. But righteous men will judge them, the way adulteresses and those who shed blood are judged, for they are adulterers, and blood is on their hands. This is what the Lord God says. Summon an assembly against them, and consign them to terror and plunder. The assembly will stone them and cut them down with their swords, they will kill their sons and daughters and burn their houses with fire. So I will put an end to indecency in the land, and all the women will be admonished not to imitate your indecent behavior. They will repay you for your indecency, and you will bear the consequences for your sin of idolatry. Then you will know that I am the Lord, Yahweh. The word of the Lord came to me in the ninth year, in the tenth month, and in the tenth day of the month. Son of man, write down today's date, this very day. The king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. Now speak a parable to the rebellious house. Tell them, this is what the Lord God says. Put a pot on the fire. Put it on and pour water into it. Place the pieces of meat in it, every good piece, thigh and shoulder. Fill it with choice bones. Take the choicest of the flock and also pile up the fuel underneath it. Bring it up to the boil and cook the bones in it. Therefore this is what the Lord God says, Woe to the city of bloodshed, the pot that has rust inside it, and whose rust will not come off. Empty it piece by piece. Lots should not be cast for its contents. For the blood she shed is still within her. She didn't pour it on the ground to cover it with dust. In order to stir up wrath and take vengeance, I have put her blood on the bare rock, so that it could not be covered. Therefore this is what the Lord God says, Woe to the city of bloodshed! I myself have made the pile of kindling large. Pile on the logs, and kindle the fire. Cook the meat well, and mix in the spices. Let the bones be burned. Set the empty pot on its coals, so that it becomes hot and its copper glows. Then its impurity will melt inside it. Its rust will be consumed. It has frustrated every effort. Its thick rust will not come off into the fire with its rust. Because of the indecency of your uncleanness, I have tried to purify you. But you would not be purified for your uncleanness. You will not be pure again until I have satisfied my wrath on you. I, Yahweh, have spoken. It is coming and I will do it. I will not refrain. I will not show pity and I will not relent. I will judge you according to your ways and deeds. This is the declaration of the Lord God. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, I am about to take the delight of your eyes away from you with a fatal blow. But you must not lament or weep or let your tears flow. Groan quietly, but do not observe mourning rites for the dead. 
Put on your turban and strap your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your moustache or eat the bread of mourners. I spoke to the people in the morning, and my wife died in the evening. The next morning I did just as I was commanded. Then the people asked me, Why won't you tell us what these things you are doing mean for us? So I answered them, The word of the Lord came to me. Say to the house of Israel, This is what the Lord God says. I am about to desecrate my sanctuary, the pride of your power, the delight of your eyes and the desire of your heart. Also the sons and daughters you left behind will fall by the sword. Then you will do just as I have done. You will not cover your moustache or eat the bread of mourners. Your turbans will remain on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You will not lament or weep, but will waste away because of your sins and will groan to one another. Now Ezekiel will be a sign for you. You will do everything he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Son of man, know on the day that I take their stronghold from him, their pride and joy, the delight of their eyes and the longing of their hearts, as well as their sons and daughters. On that day, a fugitive will come to you and report the news. On that day, your mouth will be open to speak with him. You will speak and no longer be mute. So you will be a sign for them. They will know that I am Yahweh. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, turn your face towards the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. This is what the Lord God says. Because you said good about my sanctuary when it was desecrated, about the land of Israel when it was laid waste, and about the house of Judah when they went into exile. Therefore I am about to give you to the people of the east as a possession. They will set up their encampments and pitch their tents among you. They will eat your fruit and drink your milk. I will make rubber a pasture for camels and Ammon a sheepfold. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. For this is what the Lord God says, Because you clapped your hands, stamped your feet and rejoiced over the land of Israel with wholehearted contempt. Therefore I am about to stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from the peoples and eliminate you from the countries. I will destroy you, and you will know that I am Yahweh. This is what the Lord God says. Because Moab and Seir said, Look, the house of Judah is like all the other nations. Therefore I am about to expose Moab's flank beginning with its frontier cities, the pride of the land, Beth Jeshemosh, Baal Maon, and Kiriathayim. I will give it along with Ammon to the people of the east as a possession, so that Ammon will not be remembered among the nations. So I will execute judgments against Moab, and they will know that I am Yahweh. This is what the Lord God says, because Edom acted vengefully against the house of Judah, and incurred grievous guilt by taking revenge on them. Therefore this is what the Lord God says, I will stretch out my hand against Edom and cut off both man and animal from it. I will make it a wasteland. They will fall by the sword from Teman to Dedan. I will take my vengeance on Edom through my people Israel, and they will deal with Edom according to my anger and wrath. So they will know my vengeance. This is the declaration of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says, Because the Philistines acted in vengeance and took revenge with deep contempt, destroying because of their ancient hatred. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says, I am about to stretch out my hand against the Philistines, cutting off the Cherethites and wiping out what remains of the coastal peoples. I will execute great vengeance against them with furious rebukes. They will know that I am Yahweh, because I take my vengeance on them. Psalm 83 A Song, A Psalm of Asaph God, do not keep silent. Do not be deaf. God, do not be idle. See how your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have acted arrogantly. They devise clever schemes against your people. They conspire against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe out as a nation, so that Israel's name will no longer be remembered. For they have conspired with one mind. They formed an alliance against you the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gebel 
Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Even Assyria joined them. They lend support to the sons of Lot. Deal with them as you did with Midian, as you did with Sisera and Jabin at the Kishon River. They were destroyed at Endor. They became manure for the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, and all their tribal leaders like Zeba and Zalmunna, who say, Let us seize God's pastures for ourselves. Make them like tumbleweed, my God, like straw before the wind. As fire burns a forest, as a flame blazes through mountains, so pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, so that they will seek your name, Yahweh. Let them be put to shame and terrified forever. Let them perish in disgrace. May they know that you alone, whose name is Yahweh, are the most high over all the earth. We're going to have our second piece of music to just give us some time to think about the rather graphic readings we've had today. About the bits of scripture that have caught our attention and after the music we're going to say our prayers for today. Before we say our prayers for today, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email. Check the show notes for the contact details because the vast majority of those have links to them. So if you click on the links, they'll take them to where you need to go. But let's pray, shall we? God of the seasons, there is a time for everything. A time for rising and a time for dying. We need courage to enter into the transformation process, Lord. God of autumn, when the trees are saying goodbye to their green, letting go of what has been, we too have our moments of surrender, with all their insecurity and risk. Help us to let go when we need to do so. God of fallen leaves lying in patterned colours on the ground, our lives have their own patterns. 
as we see the patterns of our own growth, may we learn from them. God of misty days and harvest moon nights, there are always the dimension of mystery and wonder in our lives. We need to recognize your powerful presence that we may gain strength from this. God of harvest wagons and field of ripened gain, many gifts of growth lie within the season of our surrender. We must wait for harvest in faith and hope. Grant us patience when we do not see the blessings. God of geese going south for another season, your wisdom enables us to know what needs to be left behind and what needs to be carried into the future. We yearn for insight and vision. God of flowers touched with frost and windows wearing white designs, may your love keep our hearts from going cold in the empty seasons. God of life, you believe in us, you enrich us, you entrust us with the freedom to choose life. For this we are grateful. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.